today on the show, we have a very interesting guest. We have Margaret Hudson, who was, prior to Pat Summit, uh, the winningest women's Division I basketball coach in history, the coach at University of Tennessee. Nice to have you on the show today. Thank you, Chris. Glad to be here. Uh, talk a little bit about how when you first got the job at University of Tennessee, you, you didn't go to get the basketball job originally, did you? No, I was uh, hired just to teach physical education, and that was one of the jobs. Just like sponsoring a club, I coached the women's basketball. And also, we were associated with, uh, as far as competition goes, we were associated with AIAW, which is an association for intercollegiate athletics for women. And so NCAA Division One, Two, Three, all of that didn't come about until probably f five years after I left UT. So is that previous league defunct now, or is it still? Yes, it's defunct. It's defunct. Uh, at the beginning, though, you you, see, you said that you had no uh, scholarships to give out, non-scholarship athletes. Uh, right. You mentioned you're like a club. You didn't even get a stipend for uh, your services uh, for being now, the women's basketball coach. It was included into the. Uh, uh, profession. Yes, it was included in the job description. Included in the job description. Yeah, just like any other professor might be a sponsor to another club or something like that. So, uh, yeah, and the way we got our players, we made uh, signs, put them on the bulletin boards, advertised in the school newspaper, and anywhere from 60 to 100 girls would show up in alumni gym to try out. And so we never, we didn't recruit. We had the cream of the crop. They were uh, All-state players, guards, forwards, and of course at that time they were playing a divided court with two rovers in high school. Right. right. So I mean we were playing five man, but the rest of them weren't. Yeah. So they were used to that. There was a transition yes, there. Yes, there was. Uh, but you said you know with those all-state players, most of the foundations for those players, as far as their basketball games went, were in place. Oh yeah. But you had, had to you had to teach them the fundamentals of. Uh, your system, and uh, talk a little bit about your fundamentals. What were your fundamentals as far as basketball was concerned? Well, luckily they came with uh, basketball skills that they had from high school. They could dribble the ball, they could shoot the ball, and so forth. What I did mostly was to look at what our shortcomings were in a game and uh, set up my practices around that so we would improve. We taught patterns and defenses, and, and they were quite good for that time and place. They were very good. I felt like we could have competed with anyone at that point. And you mentioned coming into the job, uh, your basketball understanding was about as good as anybody in physical education. Well, yeah. But but you had to you had to go out to some camps uh, and, yeah, and learn up learn up about the game a little more. I did. Anytime I have a job description like that, and I don't know much about it, <laughs> then I start reading books or I start uh, going to workshops to try to learn. And so I. I think, you know, I just had to do that. Well, you ended up preceding Pat Summit. Mm -hmm. uh, how did she come into the picture at University of Tennessee for coaching women's basketball? Well, uh, one picture you'll see uh, there is, are the orange uniforms. And one of the gals on the end, uh, the left side, is the first assistant coach that we had in women's basketball. And so the next year, that was the fourth year, well, after that season, I, I had every nerve-related condition I think you could think of. It just, you know, I knew I wanted to teach rather than coach. So I resigned the coaching. But in the meantime, they had hired or asked Pat to come as a graduate assistant. She was going to graduate school, take graduate classes, and one of her duties was to assist in basketball, like some other graduate student might teach an activity class in fencing or something. Right. So that was her job description as a graduate assistant. So when I resigned, though, the coaching, then they asked her to be the women's coach. And so uh, she was the women's coach while she was going to graduate school. And at that point, you got to pursue teaching, which right. is what you really wanted to do. But at the beginning, you know, they made you... Uh, they made you coach basketball regardless, didn't they? They they said that you had to do well, it. Well, it wasn't you know like make you. It was yeah. it was just that was part of the job description, so I did it, and I, I we kept getting better, and so I kept going to <laughs> to <laughs> workshops to try to keep up with the kids. So. And you you speak about that. You you won seventy seven percent of your games while you were there. In Talk a little years. bit about uh, the success you've had, and then uh, also how Pat has done as well. You've gotten to you've gotten the opportunity, I'm sure, to watch <laughs> her on several occasions since then, and. Well, I've watched maybe, not too many, maybe three games. I watch them on TV when we can. 
when we can get it. Right. Uh, but she she has for the game of basketball for women, there is no comparison, and it wouldn't be where it is today without her. Because Pat had already played when she came as a graduate student to the University of Tennessee, she had already played in the World Games. I mean, she was a tremendous player, and uh, so I knew when I left that the gals would be in good hands, uh, and she would bring to the, I guess, the sport or whatever, the, the basketball skill that I didn't have. Right. And, and so she is just her, I don't know, and trying to motivate the kids and her, all of her basketball players in all these 35 years have all graduated from college. Every one of them. Which is a statistic that not many programs can exactly. match. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, especially when it came down to scholarship athletes. Yeah. Well, looking right here, you, you, you gave me this to bring on the show. This is the 1973 UT women's basketball team. And uh, this is a scrapbook they put together for you. Is that they correct? They did. After the season was over that year, we went camping, and they presented me with that uh, scrapbook. And Joy Scrubs, the women's basketball coach here at Emory and Henry, had something to do with that, I'm sure. So uh, Joy played for me three years and then one year with Pat. Right. So she got the opportunity to play through both of you guys. Uh, well, she got the opportunity to learn some good basketball skills <laughs> in fourth year anyway. <laughs> well, uh, talk about how after your career in basketball, uh, coaching basketball, you know, what you did afterwards uh, when you came to Emory and & Henry and, and your pursuit of a graduate's degree. Well, I went to Ole Miss and I was there two years and when I came to Emory & Henry I was ABD, all but dissertation. So I finished that after I got here. And uh, I was teaching, I was starting a sports medicine class, I did uh, recreation, I had recreation majors, I was chair of the P department for 14 years. I coached volleyball for 16. So, you know, I've had a variety of things. And then when I uh, resigned the coaching of uh, volleyball, then we started on this curriculum for the athletic training education so that these kids and could go on to graduate school and have a degree. And with two extra courses, they could also be, they would be able to go into a graduate program for uh, physical therapy. So I tried to make it as useful, as user friendly as possible. But uh, DC Kobler has taken my position and they've now recertified for another seven years. So real proud of where they are now. I think when we first did this uh, back in the early 2000s, uh, they, there were 250 accredited programs throughout the United States. And, and now they're one of them. And, and we, universities and colleges. So. Right. So right. we were one of them. Anything that you think that uh, I should ask you that I haven't asked yet, <laughs> you want to say? Uh, Nothing comes to mind? Well, I, I think the firsts are, are important as far as the, the first graduate assistant, uh, the first uh, orange uniforms for women. Uh, in the first picture you'll see, uh, they were the Colombian blue, which is the third color for UT mm -hmm. to offset the difference between the the interface there between the, the Tennessee orange and the white. Uh, so they were that blue and I, I remember going to the chair of the department and saying we wanted to do this. We were going to raise the money, we were going to sell our donuts and so <laughs> forth to do this, but we wanted to buy the orange uniforms for the women and, uh, and she said, oh, but that's what the men do. And I said, but these women play for the University of Tennessee and they deserve to wear the orange and white. And they've also. had they've had a lot of success in those orange <laughs> They have, they have.